really having some fun with him. He said uh, uh, he was trying to speak to him in Spanish. Of course, they didn't speak any Spanish at all. And so we walked up and he said, and I said, no, sabe Espanol. Instantly, he started speaking really good English. And he said he had been uh, dating some black girls. And he uh, and I said, yeah, they're mushy mouth. He said, yeah, mushy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't what I said at all. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a lot of fun going down there because I would mix up with my cousins and we'd go to town and we'd have uh, visitors from the United States trying to speak Spanish, making deals <laughs> with the people down there. Yeah. And I could hear everything. <laughs> yeah. Even when I went to the theater, the first time, I, I don't know if you remember that movie, the something with do with uh, gorillas and monkeys. It's been quite a while. Planet of the Apes. There you go. Yes, <laughs> and uh, it was in English, but but on the bottom it was in Spanish for everybody else. <laughs> uh -huh. So I could enjoy it because I understood, but everybody else had to read it at the bottom. So it, it's, it was something. Okay, it's live everywhere, so. Let's see, wait, where'd you go? How many monitors do you have, Sandy, keeping up with all this stuff? Well, it's actually one, but there's a different screens I have to keep going back to. Oh, okay. That was one time I worked in a place that uh, I had to keep track. I had one big screen, but it was huge. It was like, I don't know, three foot by four feet. And uh, that was divided into quarters. Yep. And then I had to keep, uh, I had to keep track of processes going on. Yep. And it was uh, rather interesting. Yep. You get on the wrong one, you click the wrong thing. And it's like oh, no, you couldn't pick the wrong one. I mean, you just had to know what was going on. <laughs> My computer monitor has is 56 inches, so it's quite large. Uh. Okay, are you ready? Sure. Oh, we'll be reading. Oh, uh, let's see here. We've got to get this thing. Oh, uh, there it shows up. Okay, so we bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us today on this beautiful Sabbath uh, morning. Guide me and help me and be with me as we go over stuff that you have done and you have said in, our, in, a, in the fourth commandment. Uh, be with us so we can all understand in your name amen well during the feast of tabernacles i went over and did the the ten commandments all but the fourth today we're going to do the fourth commandment and i want to read it first and then i'm going to show you how we split it up and then everybody can take turns reading remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is a sabbath of the lord thy god in it thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy son nor thy daughter thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor thy strangers that is within thy gates for in six days the lord made heaven and earth the sea and the, all that in them is and rest of the seventh day wherefore the lord blessed the sabbath day and hallowed it now, how I split this up, I split it up in 11 sections. And some of these sections, there's a couple of the sections 
like uh, section six and seven, I split it up, but they're basically, it's the same thing. So the, uh, those two, two are gonna be very short. And um, so if, start out with number one, if somebody wants to go ahead and start in with it. Remember the Sabbath day. How is the word remembered distinct from other similar verbs? Some common synonyms of remember are recall, recollect, remind, and reminisce. While all of these words mean to bring an image or idea from the past into the mind, remember implies a keeping in memory that may be effortless or unwilled. Now, uh, people know that I go to these meetings in Fresno, and we came the, across this word we was talking about, uh, ignorance. And we discussed it, and we found out that ignorance, some people are ignorant because they want to. And so I says, yeah, ignorance on purpose. And so some people don't want to remember the Sabbath day as being the seventh day. Okay, continue. Why the word remember was put there because we I'll read them. Forget, ignore, miss as a misplace, disremember, disregard, unlearn, lose, overlook, or neglect. And I think uh, one of the, when you're dealing with the Sabbath, neglect is one of the worst ones. Okay, continuing. At the very beginning of the fourth commandment, the Lord said, remember. He knew that amid the multitude of cares and perplexities, man would be tempted to excuse himself from meeting the full requirement of the law or would forget its sacred importance. Therefore, he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. All through the week, we are to have the Sabbath in mind and be making preparation to keep it according to the commandment. forget its sacred importance. And the people that go to church on Sunday, a lot of them don't see any sacred importance on it. An example of the word remember. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. To Jesus in his agony on the cross, there, was, there came one gleam of comfort. It was the prayer of the penitent thief. This man was not a hardened criminal. He had been led astray by evil associations. He had seen and heard Jesus and had been convicted by his teaching, but he had been turned away from him by the priests and rulers. <clears throat> Seeking to stifle conviction, he plunged deeper and deeper into sin until he was arrested, tried as a criminal, and condemned to die on the cross. So who was it that uh, led him astray? The priests and the rulers. Those are the people that knew better. And uh, think of what happens today at that, in that same uh, context. Okay, continuing. And the communion is to be a constant reminder of this, says Christ. Under a conviction of sin, remember that I died for you. When oppressed and persecuted and afflicted for my sake in the Gospels, remember that my love was so great that I gave my life for you. Will you evidence your love for me if I required to die for me? When you feel your duty stern and severe and almost too heavy to bear, will you remember that it was for your sake that I endured the cross, despising the shame? When your heart shrinks from the trying ordeal, remember that your Redeemer liveth to make intercession for you. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Continue. This one is titled, Does Our Lord Remember? <laughs> Will the Lord forget his people in this trying hour? Did he forget faithful Noah when judgments were visited upon the antediluvian world? Did he forget Lot when the fire came down from heaven to consume the cities of the plain? Did he forget Elijah when the oath of Jezebel threatened him with the fate of the prophets of Baal? 
Did he forget Jeremiah in the dark and dismal pit of his prison house? Did he forget the three worthies in the fiery furnace or Daniel in the den of lions? So we know that, uh, that our Lord does not forget, neither should we. Amen. <laughs> okay, the next section is to keep it holy. The Savior kept the Sabbath and taught his disciples to keep, keep it. He knew how it should be kept. For he himself had made it holy. Yeah, it, it was him that uh, that we'll learn that at, for creation, it was him that made it the Sabbath, and it was him that made it was holy and sanctified. And this is what he was teaching his disciples. This is the definition of holy. Holy and set apart. To be set apart. It means to be perfect, transcendent, or spiritually pure, veneration or awe, filled with superhuman and potential fatal, which have been set apart by God's presence. So uh, it was him that set it apart from the, uh, the seventh day was set apart from the other six. And that's what that holy word holy comes from, because it the seventh day is set apart. I, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversations, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So here he's, tell, he tells, uh, he's telling uh, that we also need to be holy, and that needs to be set apart like a peculiar people, different from everybody else. Continuing. Verily my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you, throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Continuing. We also can be holy if, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chose you, because he you were more important in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, thou shalt therefore keep the commandments the statutes, and the judgments which I commanded thee this day to do them. <laughs> so it tells us how to be holy, and that's to keep the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments. Not just the commandments, but all of, uh, do all of those things. Because basically, when uh, they was given to Moses outside of the Ten Commandments, he also gave the statutes and the judgments, and that was all so that we could be a better peop uh, people. Okay, continuing. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. And that's from Selected Messages. And that there is talks about it being holy. You see there, it is also, it is set apart from the rest of the days. When will we be made holy? Daniel eleven thirty five, And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. That's H 4150 uh, Moed. Daniel twelve ten. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And Daniel 12, 9, 
And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So it's a time of the end. It's all the, that these things are going to be, uh, that are going to occur. And for the people who study the statutes and know that the statutes are also feast days, it tells them right there that to make them white is going to be a, on a feast day. And I, like I've said before, I believe that is going to be the Day of Atonement. But, you know, mm -hmm. that's one of those things that we'll have to wait for a short more uh, few days to find out when it's fulfilled. Continuing. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Six days thou shalt labor, the Lord declares, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. And we are to be careful not to place ourselves where it will be hard for ourselves and our children to keep the Sabbath. So for the six days, we are to work. And some people say, I don't want to work. But we are commanded, just like not working on the seventh day, we are commanded to work on, six day, on, on these six days. And that does include Sunday. Continuing. Creation, our Lord worked for six days. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. And what you see there, who blessed the Sabbath day? It was our Lord. Lord. And it was him that hallowed it. But the uh, assumption that the events of the first week required thousands upon thousands of years strikes directly at the foundation of the fourth commandment. It present, represents the creator as commanding men to observe the week of literal days in commemoration of vast indefinite periods. This is unlike his method of dealing with his creatures. It makes indefinite and obscure that which he has made very plain. And so the people that want to say that uh, it's not literal days, Mrs. White talks about that here, that it is not long periods. It is a 24-hour period of time. That's from the book Christian Education. Remember, knowing that men and women in the multitude of their cares and perplexities would be tempted to excuse themselves from meeting the full requirements of the law, or in the press of worldly business would forget its sacred importance. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, the usual business of life, for worldly profit or pleasure. These words are very explicit. There can be no mistake. But yet people change it all the time. If one is arrested for working on the first day and keeping the Sabbath, do you hear him say, I will not keep the Sabbath anymore? They are glad for the privilege of bringing the truth before the people. Shall we take the spurious and trample on the divine? No. And that's something that a lot of Seventh-day Adventists are going to come up with uh, when the National Sunday Law comes in. We are to consider it a privilege of keeping the seventh day holy. Mm -hmm. continuing this next one is but the seventh day is a sabbath of the lord thy god he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work the sabbath was instituted in eden before the fall and was observed by adam and eve and all the heavenly host god rested on <coughs> oh excuse me <clears throat> God rested on the seventh day and blessed and hallowed it. I saw that the Sabbath never will be done away, but that the redeemed saints and all the angelic hosts will observe it in honor of the great creator to all eternity. So you notice that when Adam and Eve was created, when they made the Sabbath back there, that the heavenly hosts also observed the seventh day Sabbath. 
and we will continue it with angels forever. God has declared that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. When the heavens and the earth were finished, he exalted this day as a memorial of his creative work. Resting on the seventh day from all his work which he had made, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. And that's page 180 from Prophets and Kings. And on Wednesday nights, we will soon be reading that. Mm -hmm. Before they came to Sinai, they understood the Sabbath to be upon them. After giving of the manna, the people of their own accord gathered a double quality on the sixth day in preparation for the Sabbath. And this also goes for the seventh year of rest. Yes. God, bless, God bless the sixth year double. Uh, yes. But, and this was before Sinai. And you see, people forget that the Seventh-day Sabbath was before the Sinai. It's not just uh, the, in the Ten Commandments uh, at Sinai, because there had been some people that forgot. That's why he started this out with, remember. Counterfeits are made so as to resemble the true as nearly as possible. The Lord has specified the seventh day as a day that is to be kept holy. This day is God's great memorial established to celebrate the work of creation. On this day, God rested, sanctifying and blessing it as a day of his rest. Holy, play, holy festivals and the holy Sabbath. Holy places, God told Moses, near the burning bush. The place where you are standing is holy ground, holy events. The ancient Israel, Israelites worshipped Jehovah as regular religious festivals called holy convocations. Holy Amen. objects, items used in God's worship as at the ancient temple in Jerusalem were called holy utensils. They were never to be worshipped themselves. That was the uh, ut the things in the right. sanctuary. Right, utensils, yes. Yeah. So there we see that uh, in Leviticus 23-37, the regular, the regular uh, religious festivals are called holy convocations and in the that chapter starts out with is the sabbath also being a holy convocation i think i spelled that wrong <laughs> continuing now this section five six and seven actually uh they can all be lumped together because it does it deals with the same thing in it thou shalt do not do any work the fourth commandment is explicit. We are not to do our own work upon the Sabbath. God has given man six days for labor, but he has reserved the seventh to himself. And he has pronounced a blessing upon those who keep it holy. On the sixth day, all needful preparation for the Sabbath is to be made. All purchases should be made and all our cooking should be done on Friday. Let baths be taken, shoes be blackened and clothes be put in readiness. The sick require care upon the Sabbath, and whatever it may be necessary to do for their comfort is an act of mercy and not a violation of the commandment. But nothing of our own work should be permitted to encroach upon the holy time. And I could talk about working in hospitals, but I will not. I spent my whole life working there. Continuing. Sabbath statutes, a perpetual covenant. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the day of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. And I wanted to put this in there specifically because here 
the Sabbath is listed as a perpetual covenant. And you, when you go through and look at the feast days, which are statutes, it goes in and talks about them being also a perpetual covenant. So the feast days should also be kept because they are a perpetual covenant also. The Sabbath, but the Sabbath was set apart from all other days. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the, the stranger may be refreshed. And we will get into the handmaids, and we will get into the strangers in a little bit. But the thing there is to the Sabbath, that is a, it's not just a physical refreshing, it's also a mental refreshing. Mm -hmm. Our Savior asks the cooperation of every son and daughter of Adam who has become a son or daughter of God. And so all the sons and daughters should be the sons and daughters of God and not of the world. Mm -hmm. And when they are sons and daughters of the God of God, and their life is dedicated to serving Christ, then they will be more apt not to forget the seventh day. Don't have this course in the household. Matthew 10 36. A man's foes shall be thy, they of his own household. Matthew 10 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And I put this in there because sometimes we consider our parents or our kids, we kind of put them in a status of worship. I will do anything for my daughter. I will do anything for my son. I will do anything for my father or mother. And you see, we are not to do this because we are not to put anybody, no matter who they are, or the wife, or the spouse, or husband, above our Lord. Thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid, and the stranger may be refreshed. So even though this isn't from Exodus 20, it's about uh, the fourth commandment. This here is, what is a manservant? A manservant, also <clears throat> called a valet, is a historical position that has developed into the modern day personal assistant. Often the valet was in charge of dressing, bathing, and sh shaving their employer, but their tasks rarely ended with these, those basic tasks. The manservant was the link between the master and the rest of the servants, and so was often considered a head servant with considerably, considerably authority. Like he was the charge servant. He was the one in charge. So when things went wrong, guess what happened? It would be looked at as his, uh, as uh, he was at fault. And the maid servant would, would most likely in the historical positions be in front in charge of uh, the wife and the people that did the other things in the house. In many households across the land in the days of the Hebrews, there were to be found servants or maids who were under the care of those who owned property, and they too were under sacred obligation to participate in keeping the Sabbath holy, even if they might not have agreed with the religion of their masters. They were never to be coerced into going to church, for God never forces the will of anyone. But they were at least expected to honor God's institution by refraining from their secular labors on the sacred day. 
and that there is uh, we are to give respect to the to other people, and even if you don't agree with them, you are to respect them in their in their beliefs. In other words, uh, who you're working for when you're under in their house. Deuteronomy five fourteen. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it shalt thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thine axe, nor thine ass, nor any of the cattle, nor any stranger that is within thy gates, that thy man servant and thy maid servant may rest as well as thou. Deuteronomy 5.15 and remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out of thence, and through a mighty hand, and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. So you see the ox and the ass and the cattle, they were to be rested as just as well as everybody in the household. It was a rest day for for everybody. Now okay. this this is a nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, and this is a definition of stranger. Foreigner, resident, alien, as a guest, visitor, or intruder, person unknown or unacquainted, does not belong or kept from the activities. One not privy to an act or activity, one ignorant or is not acquainted with something. And that there comes from uh, Merriam Webster's dictionary with a uh, definition of a stranger. So a stranger isn't just somebody that we don't know. A stranger can be somebody that's in our own household. It, a stranger can be somebody that is exempt from act, certain activities but you may even know who that they are and then it it's a, it's a lot more than just our definition of stranger okay continuing nor the stranger that is in the gates <clears throat> that even the strangers within their gates that is even those not yet partaking of the covenantable uh, promises given to Israel that even they should enjoy the Sabbath rest says a lot. Human beings, even animals, should never be exploited, abused, taken advantage of. And how many, how often is animals taken advantage of today? Mm -hmm. A lot. What do you do if your dog doesn't want to rest? <laughs> <laughs> He's still doing his job all day and night. Poor dog. <laughs> Yeah, if he's watching, if he's guarding the house. Yeah. Leviticus 19.33. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. Leviticus 19.34. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And even though this person may be living with you and he may be a stranger, you are to treat him as if he was not a stranger. Just like that uh, when the Hebrews were in Egypt, God did not treat them as strangers. He loved them just the same. And it's here's a, this is an example of uh, what uh, that we can use today. The stranger within thy gates was almost a topic in itself growing up. Years ago at the end of school on a Friday, long before sunset, the ass assistant principal needed a little help with some paperwork. Tentatively, she looked at me. Should she ask? She had tried. Is it possible you could give me about an hour? I know you guys are like vampires and have to get inside before sunset. But we'll be finished before that. She was serious. I doubt what I said made a real difference in her general opinion of SDAs. But I tried, 
and I stayed and helped her. And being Seventh-day Sabbath keepers, I just hope people don't think of us as something like this here, as being isolated. And because, see, we are to set an example. And obviously, this person here had some people that did not set a good example as being a stranger within the gates. Same as who is our neighbor? Aliens who united themselves with Israel were to be protected from wrong or oppression. Thou, sh thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And you see, this is all goes, who is our neighbor and how are we tr to treat the people that are are uh, are as a neighbor uh, are they so supposed to be a stranger well if we are doing our job it won't be a long until they are not a stranger for in six days the lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is the sovereign of heaven and earth gives us six days for our own use and reserves only one for himself and upon that he places his blessing and sanctifies it. He requires man to sacredly observe that day, not using it for his own worldly advantage or pleasure. It is the tribute God requires men to render him for the benefits he has given them. And this is a, a, what is required of us. And see this, if everybody looks at the sovereign movement that goes that's going on in this planet right now, this is what I have told, just this week I told someone, well, there's only one sovereign and, and he lives in heaven. The spirit of God, not a third person. In Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And then in Corinthians, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom all are are all things, and we by him. And you see in this uh, first Corinthians, it says they have one God, and then and, and the word and, one Lord, Jesus Christ. But there is no third person called the Holy Spirit. And this is, talks about it was Jesus Christ who created everything. Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And that there is, uh, who is the image of the invisible God? See, that's the father, that's the son who is the image of his father and it was the son who created all things of course it was through his father's power oh god who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So when you go through and you look, it tells you who made this, this planet, and it was the sun. Uh, but people don't, you know, they just, uh, you know, it was his son who made the seventh day Sabbath as a memorial for his work when he made all things. Ten and rested the seventh day, wherefore, 
Nearly all the professed followers of Christ do not keep the day God has sanctified and required them to keep sacred, to rest upon it, because he has rested upon it himself. They labor in, upon God's holy time and honor the first day of the week by resting upon it, which is a common working day, a day upon which God did not rest and upon which he had placed no sacred honor. And that is talking about the first day of the week. He knew that in the busiest season of the year, when their fruits and grains were to be secured, they would be tempted to transgress the Sabbath and labor on sacred time. He would have them understand that their blessings would be increased or diminished according to their integrity of soul or unfaithfulness in his service. And this is the last part of uh, the fourth commandment. And the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. According to Merriman Webster, to be holy is to be exalted or worthy of complex devotion as one perfect in goodness and righteousness. Matthew 6, 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye our Father which, is, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So his name is hallowed, and we know that the seventh-day Sabbath was hallowed and sanctified also. The word hallowed comes from the Old English word hallig, which in modern times has become the more familiar word holy. It is one English translation of the Greek word hagiazo, which is, almost, which is most famously used in the Lord's Prayer but is also found in several other places throughout the New Testament. So in saying God's name is hallowed, we are saying that his name is holy. But to take things a little bit deeper, what does it really mean to be holy? And that there is something that we already talked about. Being holy is somebody that keeps the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments. But it's also when they when you keep the commandments, it's you are also serving our Heavenly Father. Next. It is the only commandment in the whole Decalogue that tells who God is. It places God in distinction with every other God. It says God has that has made that made the heaven and the earth the God that made the trees and the flowers and that created man. This is the God that you are to keep before your children. And you have only to point to the flowers and tell them that he made these and that he rested on the seventh day from all his labors. The seventh day is God is a God given memorial. And that is why that there's a remember, there's a word that starts it that says, remember. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. 19, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. 20, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So this here tells us that, uh, that Christ sanctified himself and that we, through him, may also be sanctified. And it's sanctified through the truth or the word. But human lawmakers speak, saying, Verily, the first day of the week shall we keep, because it is the world's Sabbath. The churches keep this day holy, and those under our supervision shall keep it also because it is so ordained on our statute books, we have chosen Sunday as the Sabbath, and men must keep it. Who has chosen it? It wasn't chosen by anybody in heaven. Mm -mm. Now, these here last few is uh, like a conclusion. When the churches of our land 
uniting upon such points of faith as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and sustain their institutions. Then will Protestant America have formed an image of the Roman. Then the true church will be itself by persecution as were God's ancient and ancient people. Mm. So when you look at this here, this is a, one of those things that says when, then. It's when this here decrees are made, then they will have formed an image. People you'll see today will say, well, the image has been formed. No, the image has not been formed because it says right there, then will Protestant American have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy. Then is when the, perse the real persecution will come. We haven't seen persecution yet. They have broken it down, and the world has taken the liberty to take a day that has no sacredness, no sanctity, and they all worship that as the Sabbath. It is a spurious Sabbath. God does not accept it. They worship God as though they had not departed from his ordinances, but they have. Shall we accept this child of papacy? The Protestant world has taken it. The Protestant world has cradled it. The Protestant, <clears throat> excuse me, the Protestant world has nourished it. But shall we take it as divine when God says, six days shall thou labor and do all thy work? What shall we do? Work at that broken down line of fence. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. So very soon when we have a, a, a national Sunday law, this is what we are to do. We are not to accept it. We are to stand up and be the repairer of the breach. And, uh, and do what we are commanded to do. It's like I think Dave said a while back, the Ten Commandments is not ten suggestions. And this is the, my, last, uh, my last one here. John 1, 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. First, we see that, that uh, he went and created this this world and then he went and sanctified and blessed the seventh day and then he went and he gave the ten commandments and then he came down and the statutes and the judgments and then he talked to the prophets all the way through with him and his spirit and then he came and he died on a cross just to take away the sins of the world and now what are we doing what are we going to do about that and that there is something for you to decide in your personal life who do you accept today and if you accept uh, Jesus Christ as your personal savior then you will be keeping the seventh day sabbath and all them all that is included within that fourth commandment shall we bow our heads for prayer dear heavenly father thank you for being with me and being with us today be with the next speaker as he speaks. Be with the people that are watching today and bless their lives in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Was Richardson. That was very good. Yes. Yeah, yes. So we need to hear. Can you guys hear me? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Can you Thank guys you, hear me? Yes, yes, we do. Okay, well, all I wanted to say to this is that uh, I read in early writings that uh, right at the end of time that uh, when this message is, is going forth, we will, pre we will preach it if we're given the opportunity. And this time, there won't be no argument from others. They will be made to listen. And I thought that was really something. But this time they just the the they just their jaws drop down like, wow, what he's saying is true, or what she's saying is true. 
it, there won't be no argument saying, oh, well, uh, you know, he, uh, he died on the cross for our sins and that's all I know. And that's all I need to need to know or my sins are forgiven. Well, you know, you got to find out what is sin. So that's all I have to say. I just mm-hmm. thought I'd say that. Well, people may know what the Ten Commandments are. They may know what's written in the Bible. But as I said before, do they really know the author? A lot of times, no. Yeah. 